approximately one in every 59 children are born with autism. Albert Einstein. Dr. Einstein had no speech until age three. Steve Jobs. He was a loner. He brought snakes to school. Leonardo da Vinci. This man was far advanced on the autism spectrum. I'm not naughty. I'm autistic. And I just get too much information. Hello everyone, so here we are. It's day three of the sensory training held at Hot Hospital. This day is all about behaviors, and for this session, we have a clinical psychologist in the room as well. It's a little tricky really going to these sessions, especially wearing masks during the training. I know I, I know and understand that we have to think about the safety of all participants, but training-wise, it's hard to hear the person speaking. And then the second is you cannot see the whole facial expressions. And usually seeing the person speak during the session will help a lot in learning as well. But this is just for me. And uh, regardless, here's my take. Behavior serves as a function. Why a person is doing such a behavior is based or has an influence on the intended outcome. The best example that I can think of right now is tantrum. I know this is very common, but... It is a type of behavior, especially for kids, and usually this may happen if the child wants to go somewhere or wants to do something. I remember a time when I was watching a TV, and then my son just came to me, giving me that cue, C-U-E, that he wanted to be carried. I was so busy that time watching. <laughs> Good parenting, right? So I was so busy <laughs> watching the TV and intentionally ignored him. So what happened next is that he just suddenly started to cry. But when I looked at him, there were no tears, but it sounded like he's being serious about it. So anyway, I ignored him the first time, but he did it again. So now he looks really serious and tears have started to flow from his eyes. I thought, ooh, that's being serious right now. So I wonder what will happen if I ignore you again. So I did it again. I just continued watching the TV and then he started to cry like hell. And then he cried and cried even though hugging him while seated didn't work. So I thought, this is getting serious now. So I'm going to have to carry him as this may lead to a meltdown. Because I don't want to have a, a child going to a meltdown phase. Though he sounded like he was at the brink of it. What happened next is I stood up and carried him. I was surprised to see that instantaneously after carrying him, he, st he just stopped crying right after that. He just started to sing as well, like I think that was the ABC stuff. Then after a few minutes, he asked to be brought down. So I brought him down and then he just walked away. Yeah, walked away from me. Super interesting. It's like nothing happened. It, there's no traces or there are no traces of tears and being upset and, and those, those uh, behaviors. So very, very interesting. This is just one example that I can think of right now. There are a lot of uh, behaviors we may have experienced as a result of uh, a, a sensory perception. But if you come to think of it, any sudden change in behavior of a person may have been triggered by something or someone so meaning is it is a result of an external or internal force or forces it could be around the type of information received by our senses that will lead to a good feeling or having a good feeling or a bad feeling about it anyway behaviors are reinforced by the things you do in front of another person say your child as the saying goes, children learn a lot by seeing what you do rather than by telling them what to do. So yeah, just take note of that. Whatever you do reinforces the behavior. You either want the behavior as an outcome or you don't want it. So it's just reinforcing uh, these types of uh, or these behaviors. In short, what you do motivates the other person to act on it positively or negatively. 
One technique that can help reinforce a behavior is by giving positive rewards. And rewards are different from bribes. A reward is something like asking a child to do something in exchange of maybe a play date or going to the zoo as part of your uh, reward system. Let's say you're, a, you're going to a dental appointment and your child is becoming more impatient and anxious about it. What you can do on that situation is you can say, you know what, if you can wait patiently for your turn with the dentist, I will bring you to the zoo during the weekends. Saying your child loves going to the zoo anyway. So it depends on what your child loves to do and you can use that as, a, as part of the reward system. And then after the appointment, you can say, oh, very well, you've done well today. Good job on that. Reinforcing what the person can do versus what they cannot do in that sense. On the other hand, this is how a bribe will be. Same scenario with the dentist, and this is what happens. You would say to your child is, let's go to the zoo right now, and then later, you have to be patient when, when we are at the dentist, okay? So that's kind of a bribing. In the end, rewards are all about what motivates a person to have positive behaviors. It was also emphasized that punishment doesn't help achieve what you want in a given situation. And for most of the time, this is a use useless strategy. So don't fall for this. Unless it is a super serious incident that happened that may require this type of act. Then, as much as possible, do not use this. As a parent, usually a time out is a form of punishment. This is what we are aware of, for me personally, that we can think of, uh, especially when we are in a given situation where a child have done something wrong. So that's a common uh, act, I think, for parents, like you give a person a time out or something so that they can learn out of the, that scenario or situation. We are familiar with timeout, but really what a timeout should be is you don't want someone to be excluded, but rather change the concept of timeout by pulling the person away from, from the activity or that activity that is making the person behave negatively. So that's my take on timeout. So how do we change behaviors? Just note that be careful when changing or replacing behaviors, especially for kids. So here's what I mean. Let's say a person is becoming fidgety with a fidget spinner and because you wanted the person to stop being fidgety and you just take the, the fidget spinner away, that person will find another behavior. There's this thing called hierarchy of behaviors, meaning take away what is in someone's hand and that person will replace it with a body behavior. So just be careful with that. Emotional elements usually have bigger impact when changing a behavior because it can be modeled. As I mentioned, children learn a lot by seeing what you do and not by what you say they should do. Say you're going for a school visit because you're having a transition from kindy to primary. You keep on saying to your child that everything will be fine, all the things you have uh, planned will, will happen and so on and so forth. But every time you say this, and then you go for a visit, you're acting more anxious because the school is so noisy and there are a lot of kids out there. And then your, your child will notice this and your child will take this instance and confirm that the school is really noisy and won't be able to keep up. And so it just a uh, reinforcement or your act is just a reinforcement that school is really not a good place for him or her. So here's another example that may change the person's behavior. This may apply to anyone or everyone, depending on the scenario. If we are expecting for something to happen, but it didn't, what behavior do you usually do? For some, they may exhibit anxiety. Some may exhibit sadness or some may exhibit something else that impacting them negatively. So it depends actually as well on a case-to-case -case basis. Everyone is different. So what can we do to alleviate that? So we just need to set expectations. That is, if this will not happen, this is what we're going to do. We can use pictures or videos as well as part of uh, social stories. Social stories as a strategy is one of the best strategies because this person can see the next thing to happen and they can reaffirm that this is going to happen next. It's kind of like setting 
the the expectation and they know that or they know what's going to happen after such an event by the way in the self development world there is this pattern interruption technique to change the behavior of a person i ask about this if it's possible to use this technique and if that would work on on a person on the autism spectrum the response i got is this may not be an effective strategy because usually for special cases like this it will be difficult to apply it not that it won't work but it is a case to case basis still if the especially if the person is already melting down and pattern interruption is not going to be a good idea at that point so these are the key points that i got it was a very quick discussion though for today because Like I said, I'm having um, challenges in learning at that time because of the face mask and I couldn't hear the person clearly. So I'm just trying to recall what's on the slide. So I was actually anxious as well during that session because of the cases of COVID in New Zealand are rising and as of this recording. So I may have missed out enjoying and learning much in this session. So it's a bit short and sweet episode for us but again in the end as long as we've learned something it's all worth it right and then going to sessions like this and learning even just one strategy is all worth it so in the end we are still a winner positively winner okay for the next episode we will continue with the di- discussion for the training um, sessions and this is the last day fourth day for that training so we'll catch you later and thanks for your time Every tangata fai takewatanga or person with autism is different. If you fail with one strategy, don't stop. Keep moving forward. Always remember that for every failure you encounter is one step closer to your success. Thanks for tuning in. Until next time. Memuto te fakawa haire. Let's stop judging others. Memahi tahi tato. Let's all work together. Kia maya, kia kaha. Be brave and be strong. Please don't forget to like and share so others can also find us. Thank you.